Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today I'm starting a new series that is intended to help beginners and people who want to brush up on their C++ programming skills or learn about C++ programming. These are going to be relatively short videos and we'll be focusing on covering the core concepts of the C++ programming language. Today I plan on setting up the basic environment here in order to go ahead and compile and run our C++ programs that we'll be creating and that way we can go ahead and review the concepts. I'll be setting this up in Linux today but I'll also make sure to go ahead and link a video of mine where you can set this up on Windows as well. And if you don't want to follow along using your own environment, that way you don't have to, I'll also go ahead and make sure to link an online compiler that will help you run and follow along easier. That way you don't have to get your system ready. Instead, you can just watch these episodes of the series anywhere and simply compile them online if that's the way you'd like to follow along. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below and I'll show you one of my favorite online C++ compilers later in the video. All right, let's get started. First, I'm going to launch a new terminal and to do that, I'm just hitting activities and then typing in terminal and one will pop up then. In this command line interface, I want to install a package here in Linux. I'm using Ubuntu 20.04 for this. If you wanna follow along on the same Linux environment, otherwise you can use whatever Linux distribution you want. Most of them have this package available. So here I'm going to do sudo space app space install build hyphen essential. Now what this package does is it gives us the essentials for building C, C++ programs. And after it's installed, we'll be able to compile our program. So go ahead and press enter and then type in the administrative password in order to start installing the package. It says that it's going to take about 143 megabytes here. But what you can see in here is that we have a bunch of libraries as well as G++ and GCC which is the GNOME compiler collection that will help you compile C++ programs here in Linux. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in Y to go ahead and start downloading these packages and give it a few moments here. If you wanna keep up with the series and support the channel, please make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more C++ videos and to follow along with this series as new videos come out. All right, and once things are done, I'm just going to check and see if the compiler works. I'm gonna clear my screen and type in G++. Now it says G++, fatal error, no input files. Well, that's because I didn't give this compiler any kind of files to go ahead and compile. So this is actually a great thing. This means that we now have the compilation tool that we need in order to create our C++ programs. All a compiler is, is a tool that translates the code that you write to something that the computer can read. That's why it's important that we have this build tool so we can go ahead and create those programs and test them on our computer. All right, and to do this process in Windows 10, I'll go ahead and put where you can go ahead and follow my other video on how to get it set up for Windows 10. But right now I'm going to go ahead and also install one more thing to make my programming a little easier. I'm going to install something known as an IDE or an integrated development environment. The IDE I like to use is Visual Studio Code. Now this is also available for Windows. You can simply go to Google, type in Visual Studio Code and download the latest version of it online. But I'm going to go to the App Center here and make it very simple on myself. I like using Visual Studio Code it gets the job done for me, and it will be the IDE that I use for the series. Now don't get too caught up on IDEs. You don't necessarily need one. Just open up a notepad and you can write along with me as well in there. I'm just going to be using this for future purposes, so I might as well get it ready. In the Ubuntu Software Center, I'm going to go to the magnifying glass so I can search and type in Visual Studio code and give it a few moments while it retrieves packages here. And you can see that there's an option for Visual Studio Code. I'm going to select that one. And then once this pops up, you can see what the ID kind of looks like here with this preview image. And it says a little bit about it and says it supports C++, C Sharp, Java, Python, and many more languages here. So I'm going to hit the install button and put my administrative password in. After that, I'm going to hit the authenticate button and let it install here for a moment. 
If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit the like button. It really does help. All right, and once things are done, you'll get this remove button here, meaning that it has been installed onto your Ubuntu Linux computer. Now you can install Visual Studio Code directly from the web as well for Linux. So if I just go searching Google real quick in Mozilla Firefox, if I search for Visual Studio Code, and then I go to the download section, you can see that there is Linux available here in the middle, as well as Windows on the left, and Mac if you want it on Mac OS. You can also follow along on there as well. It says you can get it out of the Snap Store, so any distribution that has Snaps installed on it, installed on it, you can go ahead and easily download a Snap. Otherwise, there's a Debian package for Debian-based distributions, RPM for Red Hat, Fedora, and Sue, and finally Tar GZ, which is a compressed file where you can install it for any other Linux distribution. All right, great. So I'm going to exit out of here and close out. Now we're getting pretty close to running our first program. And I'll go ahead and show you how to do that using Visual Studio Code. So if I type Visual Studio Code in my activities, I'll see that it pops up. Go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. And in here, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it main.cpp in a moment. But what I first want to do is install an extension. So I'm going to the extensions here. So you can see there's an extension here, the C++ IntelliSense. I'm going to install this one. And it's very easy, you hit the install button. It takes just a moment and it installs this package for you. This will help us with the syntaxing in C and C++. Again, you don't have to follow in Visual Studio Code, but I'm just showing you how I get this normally set up. I also want to download one more package. It's called Code Runner, and it just makes running the code a little easier. If I type in Code Runner and I hit the install button again, it'll install it real quick, and we'll see this run code option available to us now. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to the file, new file, to start a new file, and I'm going to create a brand new program. This will be our very first program, and if you're still following along and you haven't hit that like button, make sure to go ahead and do so now. What I'll do is make this a little bigger so we can see. All right, and this is where we begin writing our very first program. Again, you could be writing this in a notepad. All you have to be able to do is type stuff out and be able to save it. So if I type hashtag include followed by a lowercase angle bracket and then IO stream all together one word and then I'll close that with a greater than symbol and then I'm going to do using namespace std and then a semicolon. Then I'm going to enter a couple times and I'm going to go ahead and type in int main and then two parentheses here and open and close and then a curly brackets I'll press enter once and then type something on this line C out followed by two lowercase angle brackets and then hello world all in parentheses put a semicolon at the end here that's important and then we'll write one more line and that's return zero with the semicolon so you might be asking what this is don't worry about this too much right now. Just know that this is the simplest form of a program here in C++. We should be able to now test it. And the reason I like Code Runner is because now I can run this code fairly easy. Okay, now I can save this by hitting File, Save As, and you can go ahead and put it anywhere on your computer. I'll go ahead and put it in my documents, and I'm gonna change the name here to main.cpp. I'm going to save that. And once it's saved, you'll see that I get some colors here. That's because Visual Studio Code has recognized it as a specific type of programming language and it knows its syntax, so it just gives some color here so we can follow along better. I'm going to go ahead and now hit Run Code from Code Runner, which I installed earlier. And look at that. Congratulations if you made it this far. You've successfully written your first C++ program. What it did was compile in the current directory, which is home savvy Nick in my documents folder. It compiled the main CPP program and then output an executable, which is a file that can be executed by the computer after it's been built called main. And then we ran it. So what happened is we got hello world written out to our console here. All right. And if you're not using visual studio code, 
I'll go ahead and show you how to do it through the terminal. So in a new terminal, go ahead and first change directories so you can get into the same location as your program, wherever you saved it to on your computer. So I saved mine in documents. So what I can do is CD, change directory, over to documents, and then press enter. Now if I type PWD, that'll tell me where I'm currently located, home savvy Nick documents. And that's where I save my main CPP file. If I do LS for list, I can see main already exists in here, the .cpp file. I also have this main file, but that's the executable that was created when we ran things in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to remove main, and now if I print it out, I only have main.cpp. All right, so if I type in G++, and then I type in main.cpp, and then space dash O space main, this will go ahead and run the compilation on main.cpp and output an object file, or also known as an executable here, as main. So if I press enter, I won't get any kind of a notice, but that's a good thing. Otherwise, the compilation would have failed. I'm going to do ls, and we can see that main exists here. Again, this is for people who aren't following through Visual Studio Code and just want to be able to run through their command prompt and or their terminal here in Linux. So this will be the exact same type of command in order to compile in Windows, Mac, or here in Linux. And then in order to run here in Linux, I'm gonna type a dot forward slash main and then press enter. Sure enough, I got hello world written out here in my console. All right, finally, the last method I want to show that way anyone can follow along is if you launch your favorite web browser and we'll go ahead and Google C++ online compiler. There's plenty of these online compilers that you can use. I'll go with onlinegdb.com here and look at that. It already has the bare bones here written for us of hello world. So we can go ahead and run simply here. It'll compile the program and output the contents. And we got hello world written out to us in here as well. I'll go ahead and post a link to a few other online C++ compilers in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video today on getting started with C++ programming. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.